Are you confused about how to read an EOB or just curious about what one looks like? In today's video, we're delivering on a request from our community. Keisha, thank you so much for sending the request in. She asked for a quick tutorial on summarizing EOBs. Let's dive in. Hi, my name is Jasmine Vialese, and I have more than two decades of experience in the business side of healthcare. We here at IPS Learning Institute have a mission to improve the delivery of patient care by alleviating the stress and confusion on the business side of healthcare. If you are new here, welcome. We are so happy to have you. If you like what you hear today, don't forget to like this video, give it a thumbs up, and maybe even subscribe to keep up with our content. So let's go ahead and dive into these EOBs. All right, so let's start to dive into this EOB. Before we do, I want to talk first exactly what is an EOB. So EOB stands for explanation of benefits. And so just like it says, it really is a breakdown of the patient's benefits as it applies to a particular service that has been rendered. So the term EOB is actually the term that we on the business side, the internal pr provider side of healthcare have adopted. It actually refers to the term that of the document that goes to the patient. So the patient receives a breakdown of their benefits, the way that it, they have been applied to a particular service after those services have been rendered uh, by the provider. So the document the patients receive that breaks down the payments that went to all the different providers that they see. Okay, so we have affectionately adopted that term as use, and so it's commonly used even though the proper term is really a remittance advice, which is a detail about a payment that is being received. So remittance advice, or RA, or ERA, which is the electronic version of that, is really the proper term for a provider or, the, or an organization. However, the most commonly used term is EOB. So let's look at this particular EOB. We're gonna just run through one example. I'll bring other videos up with different types of formats because unfortunately, if we're looking at a paper explanation of benefits from a payer, they all have their own unique formats. So they are not standard by any means. So the language changes. So today we'll break this one down and we'll just do some periodic videos so you can see some various types of formats. All right, so looking at this, First thing I notice is that the insurance carrier is information is here. It tells you the website and the types of plans that they cover. So here in the middle, it tells you the date that they made this payment and the claims processing date, which is not always present. On this side, you would have the payer, excuse me, the, the sometimes the payer details as well. So the payer addresses and, um, and phone number. Addition to that, you will have the provider or organizational information. So the billing entity. So the people who sent the claims in that will, their information will be present in this corner along with the MPIs as well for the organization. So breaking down the details of this EOB. So the very first thing that you'll notice is you'll have a combination of information here off to the left. It will be the patient's ID number, the patient's claim number for this specific claim, the internal claim number that the insurance company has assigned to this claim. Next, you will have the patient's full name. That's what is here all blanked out because this is an actual EOB. You get real life information here because we are billers providing you with information um, as billers, real useful information versus some other sources that might give you information based off of a textbook. This is real life. We are all billers or doing something on the business side of healthcare, providing the information for you live and in your face. Okay, next we see here is the service date. The date of service in this case is listed in two different dates. So there's ranges here for each procedure code. So each CPT that we've billed or Hicks Picks code that we've billed is listed with the date of service. And there's reason why there's a start date and an end date because hospitalizations and things that might occur on multiple days. Um, and so we have our start date and end date. And then we have our service, the procedure code fee. So here they've calling this total charge. Every single insurance company has different language for it. So we'll just go over what's listed here, but this might be the billed amount. This is what we sent into the insurance company. So we've charged this dollar amount for this one line item, this one procedure code. And as you notice, 
Um, this total allowed amount whopping what the heezy so much less the allowed amount is the amount that the insurance company will reimburse for this procedure code. So that is according to contract. This is what we would call an inflated amount. Um, so meaning that the fees are much higher than they probably should be set. The provider responsibility means that this is the amount that they are saying is not eligible. So it is the difference between the amount we have billed and the amount that's allowed. So the allowed amount encompasses what the insurance contract states. So the insurance contract says for this code 27886, this particular provider will be reimbursed 7670. They are billing $3,000 for the service. So then the payer is saying the provider needs to write this off according to contract because they are a contracted provider. So in this case, probably not the best example here because we actually don't have any Pay patient liabilities. Great for the patient, not great for this example, but we'll move on. We'll have more examples for you. The allowed amount here happens to match the amount that the insurance company is paying. So all here where we see co-payments, other responsibilities, which might be deductibles, all of this is zero. Yay for this patient. They do not have to pay anything out of pocket. And instead, the insurance company is paying 100% of the services that we've billed. So they've allowed a total of $611.22 and they've paid that same amount. And so if we look back here, each of these services that were billed, so this is another, a second service and a third service and a fourth and a fifth, each of the services that were billed have been paid by insurance. So they have their own designated allowed amount, tells you the line item amount that needs to be written off and then the amount that was paid. And if there was a patient liability here, let's say the patient has a $20 copay, typically that $20 gets applied to the highest allowable amount. So it would be from this fee right here. So this fee would be deducted $20. We would see patient, it would say allowable 206.44, and the patient's copay would be $20. So then you would see minus the $20 from here, that amount would be remaining in paid, okay? So we would see a total amount for what's patient li what the patient is liable for, and then we would see the remaining payment amount, and that attachment would be a paper check in this instance because this is a paper EOB, or it could still come across in an electronic deposit. All right, so lastly, most importantly, what we care most about is this reason code column. So some carriers publish their reason codes on their EOBs. Others publish their reason codes on their website. So you need to go do research. Some of them, they are using proper, what we call ANSI formatted codes, which is a standardized code that is assigned to the reason codes or the adjustment codes. Not all carriers, when they're using a paper format, are using the ANSI code reason codes and adjustment codes. So it's really important to um, know what you need to be looking for with these paper EOBs. So in this case, I don't have any denials. I don't have any, any, any um, need to look at these reason codes. But if I was not paid for one particular line of service, if this was zero here for amount paid, I would need to look up my reason code to determine why. Why did they not pay it? And sometimes the reason code is spot on. Sometimes you have to call to get or look online to get more information or to speak with the representative about the claim to hopefully have them clarify the reason for the denial. All right, I hope that this was helpful. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe so that we can produce more content for you. And we can give you the things that you like. And if you still feel confused about an EOB or you have a question about an EOB, please comment below. We want to hear from you. So let us know what it is that you want to know more about so we can make those videos special for you.